uh, Biden has come out, uh, you know, as, as, as president, uh, super ambitious, uh, much more ambitious than I expected. Uh, I, think, I think he took uh, his victory as, as a, you know, he's, he's old, he's seen it all, he's in a sense got nothing to lose. Why not go for the fences? Why not swing at everything and try to get home runs? Uh, who knows if he's, if he's, if he's even going to run for a second term? Uh, so why not get as much done? Kind of, he has, I think, more of a sense of history than maybe uh, younger presidents do because of how old he is and how long he's been in Congress. How long he's been in politics? I mean, God, he's been in politics forever. That should have disqualified him from president. Just that. Uh, he is also uh, so he's got he's got he's hired a lot of ambitious people. A lot of ambitious people from the left. He's got a list of agenda items of kind of all the all the stuff the left has wished they could have gotten done over the last fifty to hundred years, or, or the last sorry twenty to fifty years. Uh, all the stuff they wish they could have done under Obama. One of the things I think he learned from the Obama administration is that uh, in a midterm you can lose the edge. Right? Obama had a, a Democratic Senate and a Democratic House for two years, and then the House flipped on him, and that was it. His agenda was over. He couldn't get anything done after that. So I think Biden is also trying to get as much done in the first two years as possible. Right? He's, uh, he's trying to spend as much money, grow government as big as possible, uh, get new programs uh, instituted as fast as possible. He's got a Democratic uh, House in particular, but Senate as well, that is far to the left of him. So they are pushing, and they're eager to get stuff done. Uh, and shockingly enough, uh, Trump managed to lose the Senate to them, so they actually have control of the Senate, but it's, it's barely, right? It's 50-50. So they need every single Democrat to vote with them, which is going to be hard. But, uh, yeah, the agenda they've come up with is, is far more aggressive. He's not just cruising. He wants to get stuff done. He wants to get an agenda through. The other thing that I think is motivating him is, I think if you look at surveys of the American public, if you look at Trump's four years, I think the American public has no problem with growing government. The American public doesn't seem to care about bigger government, more spending, more intervention, more social programs, more government involvement in every aspect of the economy and every aspect of our lives. Uh, they, both candidates in the last election, both Trump and Biden were big government candidates, and uh, turnout was historically high. And if you look survey after survey after survey, the programs he wants to suggest, anywhere from infrastructure to free community college to free kindergarten to free all kinds of stuff. People like that stuff. There is no real grassroots, large-scale opposition to dramatic growth in government. And, and Republicans have lost the claim for that because Trump was a big government Republican. So, and, and he got more votes than any Republican ever got. So the Republican Party is now a Republican Party that's a big government Republican Party. So there's a sense in which even, um, you know, there's a real sense in which Republicans in the Senate, Republicans in the House, are probably not going to fight this because, a lot of this, because uh, on what grounds? On what grounds? These are programs that their constituents, for the most part, approve of. I mean, the Republican Party, and we'll talk about this uh, when we talk about conservatives, the Republican Party has really become a political party that is primarily focused on the culture war, which it, is, which it has lost for all intents and purposes, and is completely ignoring and completely has no fight in them to fight the, e economic, uh, the economic rights, the economic growth of government kind of uh, uh, agenda. They, they have no interest in it. 
Yeah, they don't want to raise taxes. They want to cut taxes. But when it comes to actual government programs, actual growth of government, actual government spending, there's no motivation. I mean, there was a lot of criticism. Uh, so one of, uh, you know, Biden's main achievement, I guess, achievement in quotes, everything, uh, achievement is here very much in quotes. But one of the things he got done yeah, in the first 100 days is passed uh, the stimulus bill, $1.9 trillion of stimulus that had very little to do with COVID, had a lot of different social programs in it, had a lot of institutionalized stuff that's going to be there forever, not a one-time stimulus to the economy and let's go. I, and nobody challenged it. I mean, Republicans voted against it, but nobody really went out there. There was no big campaign. There was no appeal to the American people. There's no rallying, you know, the old Tea Party to go out into the streets against the, the massive growth of government and against uh, the infringement, the massive redistribution of wealth and all these new social programs and everything else that the Democrats wanted. Basically, the Republicans were busy fighting over Dr. Seuss. And again, the Republicans were too busy losing the culture war to bother to bother with the size, the scope of government, which traditionally has been what they've been, you know, at least as an opposition party, best at is slowing down the Democrats' attempts to completely you know, dominate, to, to grow government to the point where you know, it controls all. So they're, they're useless, hopeless. And that's, I think, what Biden is counting on, that the Democrats, that the Republicans at this point are completely useless and pathetic. And I didn't expect them to be this bad. But they really are really bad. I mean, in opposition to the minimum wage, which didn't pass, it didn't pass because of Democrats, not because of Republicans, because uh, a Democratic senator from Arizona said she wouldn't vote for it. But Republicans were proposing their own proposals to provide minimum wage, whether it was Mitt Romney, whether it was Josh Hawley. I think what we saw with the stimulus package, $1.9 trillion with no opposition, nothing. I mean, Republicans basically concluded that the American people wanted this. Remember, it was Trump who argued that the check should be $2,000, not the original six hundred. dollars They basically argued that Republicans figured that their, their constituents wanted this, so they're not going to fight it. And really, the energy, all the energy in the Republican Party right now is about breaking up big tech. It's about attacking capitalism. It's about using antitrust. And it's about the culture wars. It's about woke culture. It's about penalizing corporations for being too woke. That's where the energy is. That's where the excitement is. And they can't bother with the growth of government. And Biden wants to grow it on steroids. Unbelievable. The trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars that in his, I mean, State of the Union addresses are the most boring speeches one can imagine. It's basically a list of all the wishes and all the things that government is going to do for you, all the ways government is going to help you, all the ways government is going to take from some, not to be mentioned, well, the Democrats like to mention, taken from the rich and the corporation, as if there is such a thing, and hand it out to all kinds of constituencies. And uh, nobody bothers in states of unions actually doing the math and figuring out whether all these tax increases actually pay for any of this. It doesn't matter. Just goodies here, goodies there, throw it over the here, throw it over there. Just spread it around. Get as many people as you can. And, and, and it's just laundry lists. Pathetic, disgusting, ridiculous, boring laundry lists of things. And Biden's list, I think, was the most ambitious list that I've seen from any president. I mean, one could only wish that Republicans, in an effort to limit government with this ambitious, now he's not going to get everything he wants, but at least if you set the goal way over there, a big, 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 humongous goal, 
you might achieve some of it. If you set the goals very small, if you achieve some of it, it's small. Republicans' presidents set the goals very small when it comes at least to the issue of limited government. Yeah, Biden is a moderate. This is moderate, and he's not going to get any of this passed, but he is appeasing his left. And look, I did not expect, and I said this at the time, I did not expect the Republicans to lose two Senate seats in, of all places in the world, Georgia. That took skill. That took ability. That took a unique form of suicide that only somebody could, like Trump could pull off. So yeah, Biden would have been dramatically moderated if he'd have to deal with the Republican Senate, even if it was 51-49. Yeah, 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 stolen seats. <laughs> That's the excuse to people who won't accept that Trump is a loser. Everything is, everything is cheated. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a loser even if they were stolen because if he was that smart, he was that clever, he was that good, how come he didn't prevent them from stealing the seats? Stolen seats. <laughs> Man, you guys are bad losers. Um, this is exactly the kind of attitude of he can do no wrong that I've argued over and over and over again that, that uh, you know, too many of you engage in that kind of uh, mindless, mindless attitude, right? Uh, not only was the presidential thing was stolen, the two Senate seats in Georgia were also stolen. After they'd learned all the stuff from the presidential thing, they, the Republicans still were so dumb and stupid and pathetic and incompetent that they they allow two more to be stolen. <laughs> Jonathan says, here's to the positive shoes. I didn't know I have positive shoes. I assume he meant shows. A philosophy for living happily on earth. Yes, I will be back to the positive shows very, very soon. I'm, I'm, I'm testing out the waters to see uh, what shows under this new regime um, get more viewers, and, uh, you know, we, we will see. I'll, I'll, I'll be able to make a, make a definitive conclusion in the next few days. <laughs> We've all got positive shoes. I like that. So Biden is going for it. He's going for everything the Democrats have wanted. Um, he hasn't gone for Medicare for All because I don't think he actually wants Medicare for All and hasn't never run on Medicare for All. But he might still, in uh, trying to appease the left, knowing that he won't actually get it because there are enough Democratic senators who don't want Medicare for All for him not to be able to pass. Uh, he knows he won't get anything, everything that he wants. But think about this, you know, a uh, uh, multi-trillion dollar infrastructure bill that has just seems to be growing and growing and growing where over half of it is not even infrastructure. Right. And we will see, of course, we'll see where, uh, where it all ends up and what Republicans are willing to compromise with in order to get something passed. Uh, good news today was that, uh, just uh, on the political side, the good news today was that um, Manchin, Senator Manchin, uh, didn't... Uh, said he would not vote for uh, statehood for Washington, D.C. So there's a big item, a big item on the uh, Democratic agenda, which it looks like they will not get. They will not get. Um, right. Yeah, Biden is a moderate, but one of the features of being a moderate is that you don't really have a position. You, you don't have to, um, you actually don't have to, you're not passionate about anything. You're not committed to anything. You're not invested in anything, right? So the whole point of a moderate is that 
you're easily swayed. You're easily swayed by those who have louder voices, who are more committed, who are willing to fight. And this relates to what I talked about yesterday. The fact is the left is much more passionate, much more in the streets, much more engaged, much more uh, engaged in politics than the moderates are or than the Republicans are. And therefore, right. and therefore it's not, you know, it's, it's obvious that a moderate will succumb to whoever's got the energy behind him. Now, the Overton window from, from this perspective has shifted way to the left on economic issues, but it was shifted. It wasn't shifted by the Democrats. The Overton window was shifted to the left on economic issues by Trump. It was shifted to the left by Trump by making, by, by being in America, quote, first, by, uh, b because of uh, tariffs, because of his attempt to kind of uh, control corporations, because of his attack on American business, because of uh, his, his attempt uh, and, and willingness in the Justice Department under him to, to uh, file antitrust uh, lawsuits against big tech. Uh, and, and generally, the, the, the no problem in signing spending bills that grew bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So the Republicans under Trump shifted the Overton window the, the window of what is accepted when it comes to the role and size of government so far to the left that now there's almost, it, it's almost impossible for them to move it to the right because to move it to the right takes them outside what they have established is their position when it comes to the role of government in the economy. Right. So it's, it's exactly Trumpism that has allowed the Overton window to shift so far to the left. It's exactly Trumpism on economic, on economic role of government issues. And this is, this is why I warned you of Trump from the beginning. Because the real damage he did is not in the policies he did on a day-to-day -day basis. The real damage is the shift in attitude now in the entire Republican Party where government should be involved, where government does need to be big, where government does need to control the economy, where government does need to be involved in breaking up companies and in, 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 in regulating it, in controlling, in managing the economy. It's not a shift away from Trump. It's an embrace of Trump. Indeed, uh, one of Biden's things that he's done over the first 100 days, which is quite... Amazing, and, and very little commented on, is that he has embraced in trade policy the America First label. He's completely embraced it. He's keeping tariffs, not just on China, but throughout. He is keeping the Buy America and doubling up. He's doubling up on the Buy America. He's doubling up on bringing manufacturing home. He's doubling up on much of Trump's domestic agenda, even on immigration. While Biden has promised, though we're gonna expand immigration, we're gonna expand, um, uh, uh, what is it, refugee stuff. So far he hasn't. But primarily on trade, and in the relationship with business, and the Justice Department going after business for antitrust, Biden has embraced the Trumpist agenda. And that's the sense in which Trump shifted the Overton window towards the left in a dramatic way, towards statism, if you will, towards an increased role in the state when it comes to our lives, particularly when it comes to our economic lives. Under under Obama and under Clinton, Republicans were advocates of shrinking the welfare state. That's why we got welfare reform under, under Clinton. 
There were advocates of smaller government. I mean, everybody criticizes Paul Ryan, but under Obama, Paul Ryan's budgets shrunk government. There was even one budget that Paul Ryan passed in the House. Right? The Paul Ryan passed in the House where Medicare was going to be voucherized. One of the best ideas to come out of a Republican in decades. There was real energy about entitlement reform. There was real energy about shrinking the size of government. Up until 2016, the Republican Party, at least some of it, was energized around limited government, returning to founding fathers' ideas, and finding ways to reform entitlements in ways that did not hamper and destroy and bankrupt the United States. That Republican Party is dead. It's finished. Trump killed it. And it's gone. I, I have no idea where it is. And I don't think you're going you're gonna to find it. Right? I don't think you're going to find it. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder. Please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now. Uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share. And uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>